Hi, in this video, I'll show you how you can use a linear CCD for around $30. So on my computer screen here, you can see the output from the CCD in real time. If I cover the CCD up, you can see that the output intensity goes down. And right now, I have a nut on there. This is the nut I have on there. So the light goes through the middle, but it's blocked on the edges, and that's why there's a peak right there. So right here I have the CCD and the driving circuit. Over here I have a microcontroller sending pulses to the driving circuit. So why don't you come on over here and I'll show you the driving circuit from the data sheet and the driving circuit that's on the solderless breadboard here. On the left side here, we have page 11 of the data sheet. And on the right side, at the bottom, is the driver circuit. And at the top is the microcontroller. So if we follow along with the drive circuit, the microcontroller outputs three clocks. The clocks are the master clock, which is phi m, the ICG clock, and the SH clock. So the colors over here, the white one is the master clock, the yellow is SH, and the green is ICG. So those are fed here into this inverter. That's what this dotted rectangle is. And the inverter I'm using is uh, 74HC04. I'm using one from Texas Instruments. So once those clock pulses are inverted, they go into pins 3, 4, and 5 of the CCD. So if you trace the lines, they come in, let me take this nut off here. Yeah, they come in over here. And the output comes out of pin 21, that's the blue wire here. And then the output goes through a 150 ohm resistor into the base of a PNP transistor. And then you see on the drive circuit here, there's some other resistors and there's a decoupling capacitor uh, for the CCD. So I put that right here. This is 10 microfarad capacitor. And over here for the inverter is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And I'm getting the 5 volts for all the power for both the inverter and the CCD. I'm getting it from this microcontroller. And the microcontroller is an STM32 F401RE. This whole board is called a nucleo board. The microcontroller is just the main chip. Okay, and the rest of the pins, they're all tied to ground. So that's what this wire here is doing. So that's the drive circuit. Now let me show you on the oscilloscope what the clock pulses look like. And the data sheet specifies that the clock pulses need to meet some timing requirements. Okay, so over here we see we have the master clock. So I have channel 1 here hooked up to the white wire, the master clock. And if I measure the period with the cursors, we'll see that channel 1 is 2 megahertz. So from here to here, you see that it's 2 megahertz. And now let's take a look at ICG and SH. So I'll just switch channel 1 over to ICG, and channel 2 is already hooked up to SH. Okay, so channel 1 is ICG, the yellow, yellow is channel 1, purple is channel 2, and that's SH. Let me bring this down just so we can see better. Okay, and if we take a look at the data sheet, 
on page 8 is the timing requirements. Here's our timing requirements. So it says the delay between SH and ICG, that's T2, should be between 100 and 1,000 nanoseconds. And so if I measure the delay between those two, I'm getting 800 nanoseconds. OK, so check. T3, SH pulse width, minimum 1,000 nanoseconds. SH is the purple trace. So we measure that here. It's 2 microseconds. Check. T4. Mm, that has something to do with the master clock. T1. Uh, between the falling edge of SH and the rising edge of ICG should be T1. Typical, 5,000 nanoseconds. Okay, so we measure that. Measure 2.2 microseconds. Okay, so that's within 1,000 and 500. 1,000 nanoseconds and 5,000 nanoseconds. So that there is just to prove to you that it's the correct pulses going in the CCD. Now, if you don't have the correct pulses, then you're just going to get garbage coming out of the CCD. So the typical way you would go about building this would be build the circuit on solderless breadboard like I did here, and then once you have your clock pulses, look at the output on the oscilloscope, which is what we'll do next. Okay, so here I have the direct output displayed on the oscilloscope. It looks like it's going a little crazy right now. There, that's better. I also have a nut on top of the CCD like I did in the beginning of the video. So that's why the output's shaped like that. And if I run my pencil over it, you can see that is displayed on the oscilloscope output. So, this driving circuit is on a solderless breadboard. Very easy to build. But, solderless breadboard comes with mm, some things you might not want, like parasitic capacitances. If you want to get your noise down to as low a level as possible. And if you also want to get your driving circuit as compact as possible. Well, luckily, there's a driving circuit for this. And I'll link the... I'll put a link in the description below. A guy named Epson Rosel, he built this driving circuit that I'm holding right here. So this is the back of the driving circuit and in there you can see there's an inverter and there's a uh, there's also a voltage regulator on there so that's the back of the driving circuit and this side is just the CCD and right here you put the clock inputs from the microcontroller the power and the output So, that's essentially all I wanted to say about this linear CCD. A little bit of other information about it. It's got 3,648 pixels. They're very cheap. They're like $10 on eBay. And that's all I wanted to say. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.